theyeshiva.net. <sighs> they say that Tzamach Tzadik says that he has two and a half chassidim. Oh. And the half they said was Reb Hillel, because he was a half Rebbe. So I heard from Reb Yael Khan once, out of Fabrengen, with us. He said, it's not like people think he was a half of him was a Rebbe. It means he was so bottle, he was so ibigigab, and he was so uh, loyal. loyal that he became a Matthias of, uh, like we say, Eved Melech Melech, right? <laughs> That's what I heard. Like the real concept of Bittal is that the thing, like we spoke from the Rosh ones, that the thing that gets bottled assumes the quality of that which it's bottled to. You yourself become, you become a conduit for it. So he was called Rebbe because he was so uh, dedicated. Yeah, says a maimah from Reb Hillel, yeah. But it's the derech of the Alter Rebbe, the derech of Chabad. Yeah. Reb Hillel wrote many maimarim. They're printed, Pelach HaRimayim, Sefer called Pelach I'm sorry, what do you ask? Yeah, Reb Hillel wanted to meet the Alter Rebbe. So what happened was he would travel wherever he wanted to go see him. But whenever he came, he heard he's coming somewhere. He came to the city, he left already. He came to another city. So he realizes that there's a Hashgacha here that uh, he can't see him. He, whatever he would go visit him, whenever he came, the Balatanya left already. So he went to another city where he was going or he planned to go, and again, he wasn't there. He left. So he decided he'll do it, he'll be a little aggressive. He found out his plans beforehand where he was traveling. He went there. He found where he was staying and the bedroom where he would stay. And he went... And he hid under the bed. He hid under the bed. And he thought this is already, uh, we call checkmate. What is he going to do? He'll come out of the bed. He's going to go to a different room. This is what he decided to do. <laughs> he was a big gone, a very big gone. Already had a bar mitzvah. He knew Shas Poskim. He was a huge, he was also a big makubal. He prepared a kasha in Meseches Erkin. Yeah, he prepared a question in Meseches Erkin. Meseches Erkin, I just finished it in Dafya, uh, not just, but uh, I mean, a few days ago, Dafya, I mean, Meseches Erkin. It's not an easy Mesechta. It's about, uh, Erech means value when somebody says that uh, I want to give your value to the Beis HaMikdash. I want to give your value. I want to give the value of my child to the Beis HaMikdash. I want to give my value. It's Meseches Erkin, how you estimate it, what you give, how you, what if you don't have the money, etc. There's a lot of complex halachas in it. He prepared a question in Erkin, in Meseches Erkin, to ask of something that was bothering him his, uh, his whole life. The Balatanya came in <laughs> and sat down wherever, and he used to speak in a niggin. So he starts speaking, and these are the words. He says, As a young man, hot akashe Meseches Erkin, da fer zich frier meirich sein. When somebody, a young man, has a question in Meseches Erkin, First, he has to evaluate himself, who he is. And he fainted. <laughs> he heard this, he fainted. And uh, when he got up, it was already, uh, he read his, it was after the Satoira, it was Lacham Isi left very. And then he realized that uh, Shem doesn't want him to see him. So he heard one Toyota from him. There was, this was it. So he said yesterday that uh, he couldn't find him wherever he went to try to find him. So he heard his one Vart. And that was it. He never saw him. He just heard him. The Baltanya passed away. He became very close to his son, the Mittler Rebbe, and then his grandson, the Tzamech Tzedek. And in the world of Chabad, he's considered one of the great teachers. Yeah, sometimes you're not to, certain people you're not supposed to see for whatever reason. He had a different uh, shlichus. <laughs> he heard, he heard. He's under the bed. Al the Rebbe said, Before you start asking questions in Erkin, you should estimate who you are first. That was it. He heard the voice and he fainted. The Lubavitch Rebbe once made a siyam on Erkin. Al Pinigla, a regular siyam, a hadrin on Erkin. He finished Erkin. He made a siyam once. 
I think it was uh, Yitas Kislev. So he said over the story. So he said a very deep word. He said, what st- it looks like Stamdal to Rebbe. Well, before you ask a question, Eric, and you have to estimate yourself. Before you ask a question in Chulin, you have to become Chulin. I mean, why can't you ask a question in Eric? Can you ask a question? You ask a question. I mean, a person should always uh, evaluate himself. She said, the truth is <laughs> that Erkin is a very fascinating mitzvah because it's generic. It's based on age. It's not based on anything else. So the Erech of Moshe Rabbeinu, the, val- the value of Moshe Rabbeinu and a simple, illiterate person would be exactly the same. As long as the same gender, same age. No difference whatsoever. How can you say it's, uh, how can, uh, so, so the person who gets Hillel was a godel. So how can you say my value and his value is the same? So he said, when you have a kasha in Erkin, you have to first be yourself, Myrich. When you'll evaluate who you are, you'll realize that there's greatness in every person. Some things you have and some things another person has. He says, that was the It wasn't the stomach of Vertel. You should go Erkin, Erkin. When you have a question, how can it be that we're on the same uh, the page. We're not. This one is Rashaikim Shaftechim, and this one is You have to go be Maidach yourself. If you're a very honest person, if you go, you, you'll see that it's not uh, there's Milas and the other person that you don't have, just like it's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. Also, both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Both ways. Yeah. Yeah. There's a chizuk to you also. You could find yourself things. Yeah. It's a, it's a avart, huh? When you have a kasha and erkin, you have to be able to uh, be maidich yourself. The Mishnah says, "Have a ruach kol adam." Be humble in front of every person. So Balatanya asks, so "You be humble in front of every person." There's certain people you can be humble. Certain people you're not humble in front of them. <laughs> Why should you be humble in front of them? You happen to know them. Why should you be humble? So he says, "You know, al chaver You always have to ask yourself. If you were in the other person's shoes, if you grew up like them, if you had their nisyonis, you had their challenges, would you not stumble in these areas? I may have done exactly the same thing, maybe even worse, I don't know. In other words, as long as I don't have your battles, I can't sit in a throne and feel holier than thou. You may be wrong, but the judgmentalism doesn't have a, doesn't have a space. And then he says even more, he says, look in those areas where you have a similar battle. <laughs> And ask yourself, though you don't have a battle in that area, right? Person tells me he's addicted to this and this. I don't have an issue with that. It's not my but those areas where I do have a struggle, do I always prevail? So you know, it puts it, it puts things in perspective. Al Tadanas Khaver Khachatagalim Kaim. Swasamas writes, Vlimakaimai Al Tagiya. All right. You're not gonna reach a space. So this is the Masechta Erkin. The Masechta Erkin. <coughs> Which comes before Tmura, now already the Dafyomi started Masach the Tmura. Do, do Halzich by Tumma and Tara is good. Huh? So, Pentas and all the people that got killed in the plague, they really they all had the same. Pentas goes up and did something. Yeah. 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 Of course, there's also differences, but there's a Nekuda in which the Erech is the same. And then there's also a deeper idea, besides what I said, that there's a certain etzem, the etzem, which is always the same. The core of a Jew, the chelik elikami mal, that's mamish to say. We always say, right, the Rebbe used to say, you have a minion, you have nine Moshe Rabbeinus in a room, you can't say barcho, <laughs> can't say Kaddish. Nine Moshe's in a room, yeah? <laughs> you have ten schleppers, <laughs> he didn't say the word schleppers, but I'm saying you have ten schleppers, that are not Moshe Rabbeinu, suddenly you can be Mekadah Shem Shemayim. Nine Moshe Rabbeinus have to wait for the one Balagola to come in in order to do it. Well, 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 what's going on here? Because there's a Nakuda Atzmist, there's an essential Nakuda in Ayid where Moshe Rabbeinu, the highest Jew, and so to speak, the lowest Jew, it's not higher and lower, it's one thing. It's one Nakuda. <clears throat> Even though, of course, there's also differences and there's a concept of COVID, and there's a concept of Yira, and there's a concept of Mayur Rabbach, Mayur Shemayim, etc. Okay. So, the Medrash Rabbe in Shmois introduces us to a fascinating concept. Usually, we're under the impression 
that when there's pain, there's sin. It's like a correlation. And you have an expression in Gemara, Ein Yisurim B'loy Avon. So, if there's pain, there's some type of uh, some type of sin, some type of transgression, some type of violation, something to cause it. Adam died because of the chet etzadas, and so on and so forth. So Medrash says that Moshe Rabbeinu tells Hashem, I look through Sefer Bereshis, and I see before every event, you tell us what happened. Sefer Shema is no pain, Without any preceding event, no guilt, no sin, doesn't even say one pasuk that the Jews did this, the Jews did that. In fact, they did nothing. All they did was they were successful. <laughs> no, that's not a sin. It says at the end of Ayigash, Vayichi, they were successful. Vayifru, they, they were successful. They settled there, they did well. Yaakov had 17 years there. Pari respected them. Yosef was their brother, he fed them. These are their names. They settled. Yosef and his brothers died. And suddenly, out of the blue, Paroi turns anti-Semitic, whether it was a new king or an old king who changed, the Machlechus Rav and Shmuel, that Rashi brings, whether Melech Hadash is literal or Shinnes Chachuk Zeroys, if it was just as edicts were new. But the bottom line is, suddenly there's a genocidal plan that he develops against the Hebrews, as they were called, the Ivrim. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, what is going on? Matzinu ein shem v'loi chetam. V'ein shenat chet. What's Hashem's response? You don't know me. V'yidabri elikim al Moshe. You think you're speaking to elikim? Let me introduce myself. V'yoy me elav, ani Hashem. In the Lashon of Medrash, les dein, les inun ele rachem. You're busy associating me with Midas Adin. You see, Mamish, in this Medrash, two Yisaitis that we often speak about. And sometimes people accuse me that I invented these ideas. And here it's Mamish explicit in the Medrash. Number one, that very often people don't know God. They have to get to know God. They have a certain impression. And number two, that people always think that everything is associated with guilt. Something happened, what did the guy do? What's the sin? It's not always so simple. It's not always so obvious. Even if there's something, <laughs> who knows? You have, to be, you have to be a Navi to know. But sometimes there are things that are bechlal in a different calculation, a different gedda. Of course, a person always has to try to fix himself and yifashpish b'maysev and repair his ways and make a cheshben nefesh and so forth. But the easy correlations, you know, you sin, this happened, sin, you did it, happen, is, is especially in today's generation, we'll see later. The Mishnah says, "Ein biyadenu loy mishalvus harishoyim v'loy miyisuriat sadikim perkiyavus." Ein biyadenu means in our hands we don't have any understanding of the serenity of the wicked and the pain of the righteous. Ein biyadenu. Why doesn't? What do you mean? They did some sin. Because sometimes there are cheshboynes and calculations that are beyond clear cut connection. A person sinned, the person suffers. Now. That's what the Medrash brings out here. And Moshe can't understand this. I thought that's Midas Adin. Hashem says, no, this Golis is a different experience. It has nothing to do with what you're used to. Judgment that's coming as a consequence of previous actions. Ani Hashem, it's not Elikim. The question was, I posed at the end of this year, how did the Medrash, as all Medrashim, somebody I saw wrote a comment yesterday, but where did they know that I was speaking about Medrashim? All Midrashim obviously are part of Torah Shabalpa. Torah Shabalpa means the Torah that was transmitted orally. Orally. In that itself, there's different types of Torah Shabalpa. There's Torah Shabalpa that was Mamish transmitted orally. There's Torah Shabalpa that the Tanayim, the Amirayim, or the Rishonim deduced from the text of Torah. It's also Torah Shabalpa. You have what's called in Halacha, Halacha Lomosh Misina, that tefillin should be black, or that tefillin should be square. Or that the strap should be black, right? Or that a, uh, on a P.H. Hadr should be an esrik. No, no Jew ever argued about this. Nobody ever brought a, per, a cherry to uh, sukkahs to shul. It's called halacha l'mayshim misina. It was part of the tradition. It doesn't say anywhere in Chumash that tefillin should be black. It doesn't say anywhere in Chumash that you put tefillin on the muscle of your left arm. 
It says in Chumash that you tie something as a sign on your hand. No? How do you know what you tie? It says you write something on the doorpost of your home. So if I would read Chumash and I wouldn't know anymore, I would go to the doorpost of my home and I would write a few words on it. Take a pen and write on the doorpost of your home a few words, Shema Yisrael, whatever you have to write. That's a mezuzah. It's lacha bracha panasa. Yeah. Uh, put in a fire alarm, whatever. Uchsafta means to write. No. So you say, no, you have to have parchment and you have to write a parsha and put it on the... The answer is, it's not made up. Torah b'firusha nitna. The Rambam says in Agdama, Torah was given with a pirush. Without that, the text of Torah becomes meaningless because from 613 mitzvahs, you can count on your fingers, on your two hands, you can count the mitzvahs that are understood without commentary. Don't do malacha on Shabbos. I would say, sit in, sit in one place. Don't carry, don't schlep tables and couches and benches. But that people do Shabbos. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Every, there's almost no mitzvah. There's almost no mitzvah. Sit in a hut for seven days. Okay, I would say a hut is a nice gazebo without a roof, right? A hut. Sit in the garden. Or have a glass, glass roof, whatever it is. I mean, it says sit in a hut. How am I supposed to know what it is? Besukah station. So any, with, with, when you dismiss Torah Shabbal Peh, you dismiss the whole Torah. People, there were all the shittas, the tzdukim, the kroyim, even in our generations, Jews who said, Torah Shabbal Peh yeah. Torah Shabbal Peh is the rabbi's, uh, the rabbi's shtick. It's the intellectually dishonest. The whole Torah Shabbal Peh doesn't make sense. There's not one thing you can understand clearly without what's tefillin, what, what sha- go through any single mitzvah, Yom Kippur, afflict your soul. No, so maybe we should give each other lashes on Yom Kippur. Afflict your soul. What is afflicting your soul? Maybe you should go to therapy on Yom Kippur. Huh? Yeah, exactly. So if you don't, if you say the document is worthless, Khalila, fine. But if somebody is saying, no, it's a real document. It's God told the Jews how to live. So it's a mockery. You give me a document, a constitution, and I can't understand a, a single mitzvah what to do. Even a bris. It doesn't say where a bris should be. <laughs> Maybe you should cut off a piece of the nose. Doesn't say where. Huh? So we could use that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Tayyar Pashat. The Rambam's ex- expression in his Akdama to the Yad is. Uh, where does it say? Rashi says. Huh? He says, Simna Yad Chatachas Yerich. So we explain, but that's already <laughs> after you know where Mila is. <laughs> But he doesn't say why. Who says it's connected to that? Once we know the bris, we explain because it was a chayfet shal mitzvah. It's all post. That's also Torah <laughs> The two become very close. My point is that that's why the idea of Torah is not based on stam faith and trusting somebody. If if a person understands Torah Shabbat Ksav, it has to come. It's not just understanding the mitzvahs, even the nekudas. Torah doesn't have doesn't have nekudas. There's no vowels. You don't know how to pronounce a word. Loisevashel gedi. I give an example. Bachalev imoy. I would say loisevashel gedi bechalev imoy. Don't cook a goat in the fat of its mother. How do you know it's the milk of its mother? And you know what that would mean? Cheeseburgers would be kosher. So get machem ergelt. Imagine cheeseburgers would be kosher. Today they have mach, uh, the fake ones, but the real thing. So we say, uh, we say, no, it's bachalei v'imoy. Maybe it's bachalei v'imoy. Et cetera, et cetera. Many examples. So that's why the Gemara says in Shabbos about Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalet, the guy came to Shammai and he said, Hillel, I don't know, I only want Tarish Shabbat So Hillel said, no, Shammai threw him away. Hillel said, fine. Taught him Aleph, Beis, Gimel, Dalet. The next day he taught him the opposite. He said, yesterday uh, you taught me this way. So he said, even for the alphabet you have to rely on me. Even for the alphabet, you have to rely on me. <laughs> so you think you're going to have a Tereshim except without Tereshim Balpeh? It's going to be a joke. Ah? Huh? Avada, what does it say about shechting? Nothing. Kashet <laughs> Sivisicha. You should shecht an animal. Okay, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Maybe it's a stab. Yeah. Vidilma Biznova. Shecht an animal. What is that supposed to mean? Shecht an animal. And he says, Ka'asher tzivi sicha, like I commanded you in Parshas Re. Where did he command? From there is one of the Heichachas, that there was, 
an oral message. I commanded you to shecht. There's no, never, never a commandment to shecht. Whatever, there's endless examples for this throughout the whole text. So that's one element of Teresh Abalpa. Pasha, that was transmitted. Transmitted. This is in terms of a halach, it's also in terms of agada. Whether it's stories, homiletics, mystical ideas, spiritual ideas, and so forth. One is called Nigla, one is called Pnimius Kabbalah. Madrashim, Agad. There's another element of Teresh Abalpa, what the Chazal deduced. They excavated from the texts. Lekemid, it says, Lekemid, the Lerimizah, Baradizah, the Gemara says in Tainus. Nothing is not hinted to in Teresh. They learned, they studied. They are the Yud Gimel Midas, Shatar, and Nidrashis Behan. Right, the 13 formulas, the 13 methods that Moshe Rabbeinu gave Klal Yisrael, how to work with the text. Kal v'chayim, gzei reshava, binyan av, klal aprat. We learned the other day, davr shahayim b'chal v'yotzim in haklal. All these method, methods, we say every morning, the 13 methods, these are the formulas of learning. You have in another medrash, lamed beiz midis, another 32 methods. So they can use these methods and deduce from the text Many new halachas about situations that the Torah doesn't discuss because things come up constantly. Is electricity allowed on Shabbos? Is IVF allowed? With all these types of things constantly come up in every generation. You have to you have to use the previous texts to deduce and so forth. That's another element of Torah Shabbat. But over there, there could be debates because people have different minds. That's why you have so many debates. So the Torah says, Achir Rabbim Lahatas. The same is true in Agada, in other aspects of Torah, Medrashim Agada. There's that which was transmitted. There's that which was deduced. So Medrashim have all these types. But you always have to understand, and this is critical when people learn Medrash, where did they come up with this? So you could say, Stama was a tradition that was given over, a story that was given over, that Moshe asked this question, perhaps. Or, Sometimes you look, you study the text well, and you look for the pnimius of it in terms of Agada, but you can't understand what the Medrash is saying if you don't understand the connection. How is this part of the story? It's not Stam, somebody decided to say a nice vart that becomes Medrash. It's a cute vart, it's a cute story, it's a cute insight. We gave a few examples yesterday. So now let's see how he explains it here. Uba Emes, yeah, we're holding page Hey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight lines from the top page. Hey, the line starts, Ledibur kosh adin. Yeah, the Medrash says, He answered, Vayoymer al-Bani Hashem shomidus harachim. Ube emes kavonas ha-Medrash letaritz kol adiktukim anal shome parshazum. Really, the Medrash is answering all the problems in the text. All the diktukim, all the questions that were raised in the beginning of this parik. In the text of the end of Shmois and the end of Eida, all of this is being answered by the Medrash. Hainu, what do I mean? When we learn Chumash, not everybody, but many people, they learn Chumash, they don't take the text seriously. It's another Pasuk, another Pasuk, another Pasuk. But really, any serious student, you have to, you have to uh, look at the text of Chumash and just see it, just look at it and let it impact you and let yourself become curious about it, how it's written, what's written, what are the messages. You know, we read, Moshe came to Hashem, said, Why are you doing this? And why do you send me? Then a new Pasuk. And from when I came to Paroi, you made it worse. So he asked, isn't this redundant? He already said, Lama Salamaza. And apparently his question is not Stam on Golis. His question is, why now? Why now? Even worse. Because he says, why did you send me? Because from when you sent me, it really became bad. And then he Mamash, repeats the same question in different words. The answer has exactly the same problem. Hashem says, Now you'll see, it'll all be good. You'll see what I do. Okay, great. He promises him, what was, was, from now will be good. Okay, so you said that, fine. Now starts a new parsha, a new vayidaber, even though we're in the middle of a conversation. When you're recording a conversation, you don't say. So he told him this, and then he spoke to him and told him this. You're in the middle of speaking to him. 
A new conversation. First thing is Ani Hashem. And then a whole mice of Adel of Ramadzik, Yaakov, Bekel Shaddai, Shindale Yudish, Mi Hashem, which as Rashi explains, what is he saying? They never saw me authenticate my promises. They never, Yashem Yudke Vavke represents Nemon Lashalem Schar, I am trusted, I will do what I said. They never saw it. I promised, but I never delivered. Hiftachti Veloy Kiyamti. And now you're going to have it done. Again, the same thing you just said in the last Pesach of Shmois. The bigger question is, or a similar question is, you didn't answer Moshe's question. Moshe asked, why did the Gullahs become worse after you send me? So what are you telling him? Now you'll see. That's not an answer. <laughs> you called me and you said, I want to redeem the people. I can't deal with their crying. I, my, 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 gam shamati, I, it's, it's, it's bothering me. I want to redeem them. I'm sending you. Moshe said, don't send me. They had a whole argument. Seven days in Shmois. Hashem said, as he say, he promised them the world. I'll go with you and I'll make you speak and I'll be successful and they'll believe you and everything will be good. And it seems so rosy and beautiful. Finally, the Rebbein Shlelem is getting involved and then push comes to shove. Pare says, we're increasing the burden, we're increasing the slavery, we're increasing the torture. And the Jews are now screaming at Moshe that God should judge you for what you have done. It's a big shaila. You're telling me this gula. I come and I speak about gula. What happens? More gulas. And we understand that we can understand a little bit of this question. It's not just a technical thing. It's a real stab in the back. Because you don't want to talk about redemption. Don't talk about redemption. But you're promising me things are getting better. You send me, I go into the fire, I go into the lions, then I promise the Jews there's going to be ghoul, a pocket, pakadati, and they believed me, they trusted that I'm coming from God. And what do they see? What do they see? A much bigger korban. What does that do? What does that do for Amuna? What does that do for the relationship with Hashem? What does that do now for the future redemption? What happens next? When Moshe comes back now a second time, Le Shamuel Moshe. They can't hear him. Here we go again. You know how many times you know this story with crying wolf, right? How many times can you cry wolf? You cry once, you cry twice, you cry three times, everybody runs. At some point, they're not going to accept it anymore. That's what happens. So Moshe is screaming. It's not just a personal thing. So what does Hashem tell him? Now you'll see. <laughs> that you could have told me, that you could have told me when I came to you. Now you'll see. That's what I'm asking. You said now you'll see before. And it didn't, I didn't see. I saw the opposite. Where's the answer to this? This is what was bothering the Medrash. The Medrash doesn't ask all these questions. The Medrash just tells a story that Moshe took Sefer Bereshis and took Shmois and started to compare them. Somebody asked in a comment I saw, what do you mean Moshe took Sefer Bereshis? Where did he have Sefer Bereshis to took? I don't think the Medrash means literally he took a printed art scroll, uh, Mikroyz Gdoilus uh, Sefer Bereshis. <laughs> The title, this is all before you'd see Mitzrayim. There was no written text yet of Sefer Bereshis or Sefer Shmois. The stack of Sefer Bereshis means that Moshe looked at the, at the ideas of Sefer Bereshis, at the history of Bereshis, at the stories, the narrative of Bereshis. It doesn't mean, I don't think it means he looked at the text. Medrash uses these words, but you have to always understand the context. That's the answer to the question somebody uh, asked. It. I don't think somebody in the class, uh, Reb Moshe. Not this Reb Moshe, Ananda Reb Moshe. Huh? No, no, the Moshe who writes comments. So, um, yeah, that's why I mentioned yesterday that Medrash Rabbah has a different interpretation also, which he mentions here, Bekitzer, by Yidabri Alekim al Moshe, Biksha Midas Adin Livgoya Be Moshe. The Midas Adin wanted to harm Moshe, that he spoke like this to Hashem. Rashi also says, Vayidabri Alekim Dibri Toy Koshes. He was very harsh with them. And later Rashi brings the famous Chazal, he said, Chaval al da abdin I miss the others. They didn't complain like this. <laughs> they never said Lama. They did. Chaval al da abdin What a pity on those who were lost and they can't find them anymore. The others. So it says, Bik Shemidis Hadin Levgayab Moshe. But then, huh? Yeah, obviously, obviously. Moshe still did it, and the Torah records that he did it. Hashem complained, and Moshe did it. And the Medrash Taka says, 
But then Hashem said, what is he complaining about? He's complaining about my children who are suffering. Midasadin should not affect Moshe. Midasarachamim should affect Moshe. What is he screaming about? What is he screaming about? He's screaming about the pain of, of my children, the pain of the Jewish people. So fakert, ani Hashem, everything was transformed. So it was very courageous for Moshe. So the Medrash, and that's just what we spoke about, filling the gaps or giving the music, the plain notes, the harmony, you know, the filling all these gaps. Such a Medrash is not in a vacuum. Okay, there's a story now that Moshe took Bereshus and took Shmois. It's actually giving the full picture. It's giving the full flavor and taste and luster of the story. How could the Medrash deduce this? Where do you find even a hint in Torah that Moshe said, why are the Jews in Golos? They never sinned. The Medrash here has a whole drama. Moshe says there's no Golos without sin. I know the Eitz Hadas, I know Kayin, I know Mabel, I know Dara Flaga, I know Zdoim, I know Esav, I know Yishmol. Fine. I never saw such a thing. Jews are being subjugated for no reason. Where did the Medrash see this? The answer is the Medrash actually saw it directly in the Chumash. Because if not, Moshe's question is redundant. It says, Moshe comes back to Hashem and says, Why did you make this nation suffer? Then he says, why did you send me? Then he says, and from when I came to Paroi, he made it worse. The Medrash is telling you this is not redundant. These two separate questions. Vayashav Moshe Hashem, he said, He was not asking why now it became worse. That he's going to ask soon. He's asking a question. Think of the actual words. Why did you bring such evil to this nation? That's it. What's the meaning of this question? Why? God knows. He's saying, why? I don't see a logic here. I don't see a sequence of events here. So the Medrash is saying, what do you mean you don't see a sequence? So he explains, look at Bereshus. Bereshus, you see a sequence. There's a cause and there's an effect. There's a source and there's a consequence. There's an ilah, there's an alu. There's an, what they call antecedent and a... Precedent. No. Precedent. Okay. An event it has before. Yes. Antecedent is before, no? No, no, no. I know a little English. Ataza. Okay. There's the antecedent, which happens before, and then there's the ramifications, the toitzah, the results, the consequences. What happens subsequently? But lama ariyosa, vaz, vu, ven, doesn't say a word. Then he says, anu kwat, lama zashlachtani. And why, <laughs> how do I come into this? Why are you sending me when I can't even help? This is the introduction to the second question. What's the second question? Not why was there a gallus. But when you're already bringing Gula, there's actually even a stronger Gullus. So when you speak about that, the conversation was really about... Yeah, perhaps you, could put it in the, perhaps you could put it in that way. That the Medrash is not quoting a verbatim conversation in these words. The Medrash is, is revealing the depth of the conversation. What is behind Lama Reyes Salam Azah? Before that, Moshe wasn't involved. You know, he grew up in Paris Palace. He wasn't having conversations with God. He wasn't invited to the table. He was a fugitive. I mean, we have to remember, not everyone is having conversations with God and God is answering, right? So flagrant until then he made the hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then this question number two. That's what the message means. I took Bereshus. I looked. I see me. There's a din. I get it. There's a din. There's a dayan. There's a judgment which comes for what you did. Here, I don't see a midas din. I don't see justice. Din means justice. Judgment is based on justice. Tzedek, tzedek. 
אך הכחשו של השנייה, ומאז בוסי, אל פארי לדבר בשמך, הצל הירא לא אמר זה, והצל לא יצלת סמך. חולי, היינו למה בסוף הגולוס, כשמסעידת הגאולה נעשה הגולוס בתוקף יוסף בגשמיס ורוכניס. Why is it? The Golas is already coming to an end. There's a Yisairus of Gaula in the world, in Egypt, by the Jewish people. What happens now? You would think there would be relief. Now the Golas becomes much more intense. And when he means more intense, he says on two levels, in Gashmis, on a material level, and even on a spiritual level. Kemavur, because of Tevin, ain't it? As they tell Parai, you're not giving us straw anymore, which means the slave labor increased, which means the beatings increased, as the Chumash describes at the end of Shmois. Beruchni is gamke. Loi hoya b'chol ha'riches man ha'golos hester elikus kozeh. Throughout the whole Golos Mitzrayim, godliness wasn't concealed in the way that it was concealed then. Bezgabrus chutz b'yitzere al Moshe shegila shem avaya likri yose b'shem sheker. The extra chutzpah of Parai Against Moshe, Moshe revealed for the first time the name of Hashem. Hashem said to redeem, to let his people go. And Parai uses and defines him as a lie. K'mayshe Kosov, as Parai says, Al Yishu b'divrei sheker. Tichbad ha'avoyde, they have to work harder. They shouldn't turn their heads to lies. What are the lies? Moshe's lies. What were the lie of Moshe? Communicating Hashem's word. At this moment, Paroi wants to deny completely a reality of godliness. Paroi says, They're lazy. They're lazy, good for nothings. And that's why they're saying, We have to go worship God. People who don't want to work, use God. And he says, As the uncle says, Nirpe means you're a bunch of batlonim, lady gayers, pustyakas, as they say. Ah, huh? you ever heard that word? Paskudnyak is something else. Pustyak comes from the word pust, which means empty. You're empty. You don't want to do anything. You're a batlon. Batlon means you want to nullify all work, all labor, all effort. So what do you do? God, religion, have to go learn, have a holiday with God. What holiday with God? There's an economy to sustain. Pisim and Ramses have to be built. And he says, <laughs> This is the taina of al They always say this, that Malchus <laughs> Some words people want to get rid of. They want to, the religious people want to get rid of oil malchus. They don't want to be loyal to the government. Oil derecheret, derecheret is work, business. Derecheret means engaging in the way of the land, which means building an economy, working for a living. They're not interested in the yoke. So what do they do? They create a fictional idea of a new malchus, some kingdom of heaven, literally a kingdom of heaven, not on earth. Go disprove it. Go disprove it. They promise you paradise, purgatory, but nobody ever came back. That's what that pur- Nobody ever came back. It's very easy, I tell you. You do this in this world, in the afterlife, go prove it. Boy, me, I tell me, I'm A contemporary of this person was another Jew. He was baptized, but he was a Jew. And he said, religion is the opium for the masses. Those words. Basically, you need an opium, you need a good drug. You don't want to... Karl Marx. Huh? Mamisha contemporary, 1860s, 1850s. His manifesto was published the same time that this was said. Huh? Zeluma Zaya, Mamish. And Russia, always, the, you know, the Russians, uh, the Russian intellectuals. <laughs> I'm saying he affected the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, what's Pari saying? The, 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 the words of Pari is nirpim artem nirpim. So the uncle says, batlonim atem batlonim alkeinatem oimrim nelcha nizbuchal Hashem alakeinu. 
Your whole relationship with a God is only coming because you're trying to get away from real life. You're trying to live a fictional life. You don't want to work. You don't want to be dedicated. This is Pyrrha's excuse for increasing the burden of torture and love and, 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 and hate and, and, and oppression. Ube'emes, in this case the same. Medrash is a part of Agada, Or Agada is part of Medrash. Yeah, yeah. This attitude towards Hashem you don't find throughout the Golas of Mitzrayim. The first Parai who uh, placed Yosef on the throne and made him the prime minister of the country, he was Maida. He expressed, he acknowledged Alekim. He tells Yosef, after Hashem notified you what the meaning of my dreams are, so you should become the prime minister and you will run the whole economy and the whole country and so forth. But here, Parai says it's Sheker. It's Nirpim Atem Nirpim. God is just an invention of Moshe. He calls it Sheker. So he says here, the Golos becomes much stronger in Gashmis but also in Ruchnis. There's two types of Golos. There's the material pressure, and there is the spiritual concealment of all truth, also a part of Golos. And both things become intensified in the negative after Moshe gives the message of Geula. This is a second question. Yeah, that's the Shechinta Begalusa. The Shechinta is in Golos. Completely in Golos. So this is Moshe's Taina. It's already finishing. The light at the end of the tunnel is already visible according to you. There's a Hisairus of Gula. And then the Jews look around and what do they see? The opposite. Al Zahisa Truva, that's what the Medrash is saying. If that's the case, now we understand why there's two answers. Al Zahisa Truva. On this Hashem answers, Mikoidem Atatir. The first thing he says is, now you're going to see. Pirish. Ata. The word is Atatir. Now you'll see. Ata Dafka. Now that the concealment and godliness has become more intense to the point that you can't even fathom it should become any worse. It's a parallel here. Now that you're in a gullus that can't get worse, so to speak, there's going to be now, precisely now, ata, ata, now there will be a revelation of godliness that can't get better. Achakola clippers is battle to the point that all of the clippers, the shells, the husks, the cover ups will be nullified. They will all acknowledge and become subservient in the presence of Hashem, as Hashem says, now you will see that with a strong arm, He will expel them, He will send them away from His land. What's that with a strong arm? He will do it with the full intensity, and it will be the Yad Chazaka of Hashem also, because he will have, they will have to acknowledge Hashem. Then comes a whole new explanation. The two questions of Moshe, are being answered in two different conversations. That's why the post splits it up in conversation. It's even two separate parshias. One is Shmois and one is Veda. First thing he says is, Atasir. You want to know why this happened now? Now you'll be able to see the Geula. There's something about the Geula that can happen only now when this new concealment was added. So you're saying, how when we're already talking Geula, why are we back in a worse Galos? So he's saying something very deep that's going to be developed. That sometimes what you're seeing as the worst gullus is part of the gula. It's because we're speaking about gula that this happened. Because this is already the good news. Now you ask the question, how does Bechlal, this whole gullus happen? There's no sin. You're thinking Elikim. And you're trying to understand why am I not being a faithful judge? Why I may love? No, you have to get to know me. Ani Hashem. It's a whole different Misa. That's the question. That's the answer to the big question about Gullus in general, not only about this particular point. So, so what do you have? 
Ka'es, ataza, yeah. That's the word atatir. It's not just now you'll see. It's like you're telling me what's going on. You'll see. You'll understand. Yeah. Yeah. Now you could see. Now there could be Gula. Because this part of Golos is already the beginning of Gula. That's what happened after this Sardis of Gula. Now that there's a Golos, Shein Lamata Emanu, the lowest conceivable Golos, there could be a Gilu Yelikus, a revelation of godliness, Shein Lamayla Emanu. The Golos is getting worse though, the Master, right? They had to collect the straw and all that, yeah. That's why they couldn't listen to Moshe. So Moshe was experiencing despair, like... So it's all over. Like, so if when it's getting good, it's bad. There was a Yiddish Alet. His name was Shalom Aleichem. <laughs> I don't know if I should mention him in a Shia, but uh, <laughs> so he used to say, and let's say he used to say, the Abrish to the health. You know, he says, the Abrish to the health and find them as a health. You know, God should help. Everyone says, God will help. He says, yeah, but I want God to help before he helps. <laughs> right? So the Malika Yiddish Aletzonis. In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu looks and says, it's going to be hopeless now, I'm going to come back again. So that's what he's telling him, that it's not that way, you don't understand. Atta Sirin, Atta, now you'll be able to see the Gula. This is not a chilek of the Gulas, this is a chilek of the Gula. Obviously it's not the, the culmination of the Gula, it's still the, the, it's the dark side of the moon, but it's like what we, you would call maybe Aschal to the Gula. This is this is this is the just introduction. He's going to explain. It all has to be explained. <laughs> okay, very good. You're saying you're crushing the grapes, and this one is saying, "Why are you destroying such good grapes?" And then they and then they taste the wine, and then they taste the wine. You invite them the next night for the party. They say those are the crushed grapes. Huh? What? It's, it sounds like that person, you have to get invited, but every Jew is invited. Yeah, yeah. Avada. It says there'll be a sud of Yayin HaMashumar. Yayin HaMashumar, right? Levyasin and Yayin HaMashumar. Huh? The wine that's uh, that's protected from Sheshi Semebereshis. Okay, we'll be mafsik here. I'll send you the bar of What you're saying now is actually this whole like very deep idea is usually reminiscent of the Holocaust. So the worst, worst, worst Yisrael with the end is he writes about this, the Ish Kodesh, the Beit I'll send you, he writes very specifically because first he says he's machazing the Jews that after all, these kind of Yisurim Kha Yisrael already had once before, we have to have to suffer. And then there's an asterisk, it's not good that he writes later, he says, I realize now that what I wrote about these Yisurim is only the Yisurim that happened until early 1940. Wow. I'll, I'll send it to you. Like, I have this in my book. It's Mamish. It's really the Eish Kodesh. The Eish Kodesh. Send the, I have it. I'll listen to it. Maybe you'll tell me this. Reb Kleinem is Kalman with Pia Setzna. Hashem Yen Kim Damai. You're right. Mecheni na mesifracha. Shekayach Reb Moshe. Lama yomru hagoyim ayin na elikayim. I'm here in Mitzrayim. Bura hitziyam larig oisa. Achilol Hashem, basically. Achilol Hashem. And by the Miraglam also, he says to Hashem, they're going to say that you took them out just to kill them. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.